welcome or welcome back to my channel. Welcome to today's video. We are doing our second installment of my Realmathon weekly reading vlogs. Not sure if this is gonna be a one week reading vlog or a two week reading vlog like last time. Like, I'm not really sure. I was in a reading slump for the first two weeks of March if you didn't watch my first reading vlog of Realmathon. And you know what? I'm just gonna pick up right where we left off. Literally, I am filming this the second I finished that outro for to the last vlog. So hi, I'm in the same clothes. I went to Olivia Rodrigo last night and it was awesome. But this week I am going to try out a little reading challenge. I'm going to try to read some books with blue on the cover or blue books. I am on team Creash. Shout out to all the little bees in the community. We are an amazing team. My team color for Realmathon is blue and I get extra points to reading blue books. So I have the perfect book that I'm going to be reading in this vlog and I'm very, very excited to start it. I might as well just talk about it. I literally have to read this like ASAP because it's a library book and that is Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. What? She's reading a romance, a contemporary romance book? Um... Who is she? Literally, who am I? I don't even know. I don't even remember the last time I read a contemporary romance. I have heard incredible things about Abby Jimenez as an author. This was the one that I feel like everyone started to love Abby Jimenez for, but then she also wrote um, Yours Truly, which I have heard so much, so much love about. And I also have that one on my TBR. So I am really interested. The reason that I decided to pick this up at the library is because I saw it in one of like the booktube's best reads of 2023 video that Katie Colson did. Shout out to Katie Colson. And I immediately was like, I need to put this on hold at the library ASAP. So came in from the library. I have literally like three days to read it or something. I think my hold is up in three days. So that's a little concerning. Um, hopefully Spotify has the audiobook of it so I can read and listen to the audiobook. But wait, not only is it a blue cover, so I'm gonna get points for that. Is there an animal on the cover? Yes, there's a little rooster right there. Getting a point for that, baby. Hell yeah. And then the other thing, I read the first page and I was like, am I gonna like this? And then, guys, listen to this. It was still a two hour drive from home, stuck on some lonely stretch between the funeral home I just left in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and my house in Minneapolis. <laughs> Did I just find my new favorite book? I love reading books set in Minnesota. I love it, okay? And also, how like how did I not even recognize that? This is literally the Minneapolis skyline right there. We have the Wells Fargo building. We have, is Target on here? I don't know. I think maybe this is Target. And then I think there's an RBC building on here or something. I'm not great at the Minneapolis skyline, but like that is it, okay? I'm obsessed. Like already five stars. <laughs> I am going to be, yeah, reading some blue books this week. Not sure what I'm gonna read next after I finish this. Um, but the other book that I will be reading this week, it's not a blue book, but like I just have to continue on with it, is uh, Golden Sun by Pierce Brown. That's the second book in the Red Rising series. I just finished Red Rising yesterday and left off on a really big, not even a cliffhanger, well, kind of a cliffhanger, but like we need to go on. We need to need, read the next two books in the series. Um, I do own a copy of this book, but it is in a, an, a book haul that I need to film either today or tomorrow. Um, so I will be showing you the physical copy at some point and I do have it and I do own it, but like I need to continue on with the series. I need to know what's gonna happen. If you don't know what Red Rising is, let me tell you, okay? Also, no idea what this is about other than it's at Minneapolis. Like that's all I need to know and I'm sold. Red Rising is about our main character, Darrow. It's set on Mars where humans have basically gone and taken over Mars. They Humans have been able to be like genetically modified to be almost like superhuman type creatures. And there is a various list of colors in this society, okay? And, and they range from like red to gray to purple to green to literally every color. And everyone has their own like place in society essentially. And Darrow uh, is a red and he is terraforming Mars for the potential migration of humans to Mars. And that's all I'm gonna say about the book. The trope in the book is a competition style. It is incredible. I loved the first book. If you didn't watch last week's reading vlog where I read this book um, and kind of vlog my experience, I would highly encourage you to go watch that. And I would just like encourage you to read it if you like the Hunger Games, okay? This is the Hunger Games for adults who like space. It's so good, it's so good. And I feel like I was left on a really big cliffhanger and I need to go on because it just feels like the world is gonna open up. It's gonna elevate elevated, like I cannot wait. So I'm going to be listening to Golden Sun on audio. It's on Spotify Premium. 
FYI, if you are a Spotify premium member, you can listen to 15 hours of audiobooks for free every month. And I'm going to do that with this one or with Golden Sun. So those are the first two books that I'm going to be reading in this vlog. Again, I'm in a reading slump. These might be the only two, two books I read in this vlog, but we'll see. I just wanted to get a start on it today. I have a lot of cleaning to do. Like it's spring cleaning time, baby. I got to clean up my closet. I got to clean out like there's a cabinet I need to get cleaned out. Like literally I just need to clean. Okay. That is going to be the plan for the vlog today. I hope you guys enjoy the video. I hope you guys read Red Rising and let me get to cleaning because I need to. I need to clean. Okay. See you in the next clip. Bye. Hey everyone, it is Sunday today. I uh, don't know, March 17th, it's St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Quick, brief little update. I'm literally on page like 30 of this book, but I just wanted to like gush for a second because who knew I could like a contemporary romance? Like literally who? <laughs> okay, let me just brief explain what it's about. Basically, it's about our main characters, Alexis and Daniel. Alexis lives in the big city, AKA Minneapolis, Minnesota. She is coming back from a funeral as she's driving home from Iowa. She drives off into a ditch to swerve from a raccoon. And this kind police officer pulls up and is like, hey, can I tow you out of the ditch? And of course things start from there, okay? They see each other in a bar when she's like, I need food. And that's where we're at right now. But I think this is the contemporary romance I needed. And also I got a reminder from my library. It's like, hey, this is due in three days and you can't renew it because there's a bunch of people waiting in line for it. So I better read this. Like, I think I'm just gonna read this tonight, honestly. I know this term has been going around booktube, like popcorn reads and when I don't even like know what it really means but to me it means like short cute quick reads that like don't take a lot of brain power and that feels like this like I am reading at a pace that is unprecedented for me okay I, I read for maybe 20 minutes this morning and I read like 40 pages or, so, or like 35 to 40 pages which is like unheard of like I read at a very slow pace like fantasy reading I usually read maybe like 25 pages an hour and for me to just like literally just be skimming and understanding what's going on and also being absorbed into the plot I'm loving it <laughs> It's giving big city girl in small town and the fact that it's set in my home state, like it's just everything. <laughs> this feels like a Hallmark movie already. And I'm in love, okay? I'm in love. <laughs> I'm hoping we get a little bit more than just romance. Like I'm hoping we get like some kind of like representation of some sort or whatever like trial they have to go through is like something I couldn't, you know, maybe relate to or get emotional about. I'm not really sure. But reading update aside, I do have a few other bookish updates to give you. First of all, super exciting. If you didn't know, I am redecorating this room and I am filming a vlog, a redecoration vlog that's been going on for like the past six months of me redoing this room. My book chair that I picked out is coming in next Saturday. I'm so excited. Oh my God, I've been waiting like three months for this chair and it's finally ready for delivery and I'm so excited. So literally I'm gonna be changing like the whole setup of this. Like my chair is gonna go right where my desk is where I'm sitting right now and my desk is gonna go back there, but I'm still gonna be filming from this angle so you can see my bookshelves. I don't know, I'm gonna have to play around with the setting and stuff like that, but like you don't even know how excited I am to sit in this chair and read my books and just like play my Switch. And this is like my cozy gaming reading room. Like literally nothing could be better in my life. 
no joke. The other thing is that I just filmed my book haul, which probably is up at this point. If you haven't seen my recent book haul, I'm gonna leave it linked down below. Um, but I just filmed it and I'm just like freaking out over these Akotar dust jackets. Oh my God, oh my God. I also have never ordered custom dust jackets before and it was quite a struggle to put these on. Like I didn't know if I was doing it right. I kept the original dust jackets on because I don't know what I'm gonna do with those dust jackets otherwise, but like they're quite, maybe this one shows it pretty well like it's quite roomy around the book and I don't love that so if anyone has tips for how to put on a custom dust jacket please let me know because I am struggling right now the fact that I am holding this in my own two hands what this book has done to me can't even explain it words can't even comprehend okay okay Cool. I am gonna go. Uh, I'm getting lunch with my family today and then probably just gonna read the rest of the evening. Super excited. And I hope you guys are enjoying the vlog. Uh Is up everyone <laughs> you guys <laughs> I just had a day a day at work it was one of those days where I like got in my car after work and I just sat there staring just like staring for like 15 minutes I swear to god not talking to anyone no music I literally sat in my car car is off and I just stared dude I can't I'm so I have tomorrow off of work Thank God. It was like one of those days where like literally stressful things back to back to back to back to back. And like in healthcare, you just got to take what it comes at you. Like, you know, you have so many different patients. One patient could go great. The next patient could go terrible. And it could just be like a line of like stressful things. And that's what it was today. And I'm just, dude, like I... I can't. My mind has like worked overtime today and I need to turn it off. Like I need to go watch Love Island All Stars. I like, I cannot right now, okay? I cannot. But I wanted to give this update because I was reading this last night. I'm probably around page 60 or 70. Oh my God! Okay, wait. I have so many developments with this book and I just need to gush for a sec, okay? because we've had a stressful day. I just need something to make me happy and this is gonna make me happy and talk about it right now. Let's just start from the beginning. First of all, did you know Abby Jimenez is from Minnesota? I found that out like a few days ago and I tried to look it up to see if she's having any book events or anything. She is not having a book event at my favorite bookstore and of course I'm gonna be on a trip when she's here. I was so mad about it. Ah! 
but I'm gonna keep an eye out if she ever has any events in the future because I totally want to go. Oh my god, okay. So that was the first thing. Automatically, I'm like already in love. Now I want to read her entire backlist. Like I'm already in love with this book, by the way. Like, <laughs> so who knew that I could feel this way about a contemporary romance? Okay, let me explain, let me explain. So we have like big city girl falling for like the backwoods farmer guy, which is like cute because, okay, if you, she lives in Minneapolis, which Minneapolis is like, I mean, it's like a, it's like a mid-sized city, right? But like you go, you know, 30 minutes one way, 30 minutes the other way, there's farmland. So this could be a reasonable thing that happens. Also, we appreciate Abby Jimenez giving us the Minnesota lore. Like she knows, she knows her locations. While Wakan, which is the town that this guy lives in, is not an actual town, at least that I know of, I Google mapped it and I couldn't find it. He did say that it was off the Root River and the Root River is an actual river. Props to her. Also, she's naming like local cities that are around the Minneapolis like suburban area, which are real. And she just knows, she just knows. Also, the way that the characters are speaking, very Minnesotan, very, very Minnesotan. Okay, let me just, <laughs> I was literally reading this last night. <laughs> and um, I was telling Reed, I was like, oh my God, it's set in Minnesota, like blah, blah, blah. I, I was telling Reed how it's like set in Minnesota and stuff like that. He's like, okay, is the audiobook? do they have a thick Minnesotan accent when they're listening to the audiobook? I'm like, I don't know. But if they did, th they better do. I swear to God, you gotta keep that Minnesota accent strong, okay? Listen to the, <laughs> listen to the part that I read last night. Here we go. <laughs> Okay, this is, a, this is a strong Minnesota accent. You know, I have a theory, I said, switching the phone to my other ear. Oh yeah, what's that? <laughs> okay, that's a very strong, that's a very strong version of a Minnesota accent. And like, I gotta admit, people from Minneapolis don't actually talk like that. But like, if you listen, if you've been watching my channel, I'm sure you've picked up on the fact that I, I have a Minnesota accent. And I say like, you know, or you guys, like all the time, like classic Minnesota speech, it's our vernacular. I just appreciate she's throwing it in there and I'm in love. <laughs> Wait, also the other thing I wanted to talk about is not only is this book set in Minnesota, AKA where I'm from, our main character is a doctor. Like. Wait, what? And I also work in the medical field too, if you didn't know. And I'm just like, oh, I can relate. My God, I'm obsessed. I'm literally obsessed with it. So we're following those two, these two characters, right? You have Alexis, who is our big city doctor living in Minneapolis. She works for like basically the equivalent to Mayo Clinic and she's like an ER doc. And then you got our like cute little farmer guy. Also there's a, it's an age gap. It's like a 10 year age gap between these people. I've never read an age gap romance, which I'm kind of, I'm kind of loving the fact that the woman is the older character in this rather than the man. So, and then you have Daniel who is our like, he's not a farmer, but like, you know, he's just like our little country boy. Like he has a dog. He's like lives out in the country and like, he just like goes to the bar every night. He's like a property manager or like, I don't know, something along those lines. But it's just so cute and I'm just in love and I can't wait to see where this romance goes. It's 10 out of 10 so far. I'm just in love with it. And I honestly, like this feels so out of my comfort zone. Like I normally do not like contemporary romances. I just feel like, the contemporary romances I have read, more times than not, I am disappointed. Um, and it's pretty uncommon that I find a contemporary romance that I am like gushing over like this. So I am super, super happy to be reading this. So happy I picked it up. I also want to read um, Yours Truly, which she also released. And I feel like she released another one too, which I'm not, I can't remember. I think it's new and I can't remember it off the top of my head. I love it. 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 So yeah, that was just my update I wanted to give. And it's just cute. We're living in Minnesota with our little Minnesota sort of accents she's living in Minneapolis and I'm just I love reading about just the Minnesota lore like when you when I see the word YZ I'm like I'm home baby <laughs> or if you're not from Minnesota if you ever look up Minnesota cities or like suburbs around Minneapolis a lot of people would not know how to pronounce the names of these cities unless you lived there and I just appreciate she is including just Minnesota geography and lore and things that Minnesotans do in this book. Okay. I'm also like, my throat is a little bit sore and I kind of hate it. I was gonna work out today, but I'm just like, after the day I had, 
and my throat is sore. I just like literally all I want to do is curl up on the couch and watch Love Island All Stars. Oh my God. If you haven't been watching that and you like Love Island, it's a must, okay? I swear to God, this is the most fun I've ever had watching Love Island ever before in my life. It is drama filled. Oh my God. We got love triangles and love triangles. It's great. Like would recommend 10 out of 10. I will give you an update when I am further into the book. I hope I continue to love it. Also, this is due in the library tomorrow, but yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out. Bye. How's it going? It is Wednesday today. It is my day off. Yay, 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 yay. So I made it about 35% into part of your world. And as you saw in a previous clip, I did have to return it today, but they did have it on Libby, like for a Kindle version. So brushed off the old Kindle. I honestly haven't read a book on my Kindle in so long. I'm such a physical reader. Busted out the old Kindle. We have downloaded it. I got it back to where I left off last. So super pumped about that. I am enjoying it. We'll say Daniel's coming on a little strong. There hasn't been a lot of build up where it's like, okay, for me, the best part of a romance is the tension building. We are 32% in and we've had a few different fade to black scenes so far. And not that that's a bad thing, I'm still enjoying it, but I'm just feeling like the romance is moving very, very quickly. And I'm like, I don't feel like I have anything to look forward to in the romantic sense. Do you know what I mean? The one thing that I am enjoying about this though is that we are getting not just a romance plot here. Like we're getting other issues that our characters are having to deal with. Like there's a housing situation on both ends that are not great for either of our characters. Like our main character, Alexis, her ex-boyfriend is like trying to still live in her house when like they had this agreement that he wasn't going to. And then like our other main character, Daniel is getting kicked out of his home. And like, so there's a housing crisis going on. It's leading me to wonder if these people are going to end up living in the same place. The one thing I'm just not in love with is that the fact that the romance is so strong right now and we're 30 percent in they are very sweet like he's a very like golden retriever type character which is cute but there hasn't been a ton of lead up it's like we started off with a little bit of a friends to benefit situation then daniel is coming on really really strong and it's like slow your roll boy you know just take a step back just just take it's it's giving a little bit of a desperate energy and that's not what i like to read in a romance you know <laughs> All of this to say though, I still am enjoying it. So that's part of your world. Let me give you another little check-in. So you did see I went to the library. I got two books. These holds finally came in. I got um, A Curious Beginning 
by Deanna Rayborn. Yeah, I have been hearing so much buzz about this series. This is the Veronica, Spe Veronica Speedwell mystery series. I am not a mystery girly at all. Like literally when was the last time I read a mystery? I can't even remember. I don't even know what this is about, but I know that there's like a bunch of different books in this series and I'm just interested, okay? I wanna be part of the girlies. I wanna be in the know, okay? And everyone's reading whatever the newest releases of this book, of this book series and I just I want to be in on the action so I have no idea what it's about all it says on the back London 1887 I'm in it already sounds cool and I just feel like this could be a really fun little read so this is the first one I got from the library the second one is the ever king I heard about this from Rachel from Ravenhaired Reader's channel. She said she really enjoyed it. And then I was seeing it on a few different people's channels as well who like fantasy romance. And I don't know, I was intrigued. Okay, that's cute. Are we, it's giving pirate? Like, hot? <laughs> Literally, it's giving pirate. Do you see that, like the, this thing in the background? A sailor's grave. Ooh, we are the Ever King's crew. It's it, pirates. Okay, I'm already excited. <laughs> Genuinely, no idea what it's about. Hoping it's an enemies to lovers pirate fantasy romance. I am there, okay? Oh wow, this is, this is like thick paper too. This is a 380 page book. It feels like it's more than that, but it's not. Okay, excited about these. So these are the two that I picked up from the library. Hopefully going to be getting to these soon because especially this is a blue book. LOL at me thinking that I was gonna be reading blue books this week. I am still reading a blue book, but like I don't know how I'm gonna read multiple of them. This seems like it would be a good fit for this week as well. So we'll see. Last update I have for you is my genre blanket. Um, look, I haven't updated you on this since I started it. I literally, this is my new favorite hobby, is watching Love Island All-Stars and doing my crocheting. <laughs> it's so fun. Okay, there we go. This is as far as we've gotten. It's really giving um, cozy, warm blanket. Lots of pinks going on, which, I mean, I kind of knew that was gonna happen. Um, I do get to add a green onto it from Red Rising, so that's gonna be cute, and I'm super excited to get to that color. But here, I'll just like take you through the lines. So each of these cream colors marks a new month. So this is January, this is February, and then um, this was a nonfiction book. All of these are three Sarah J. Mass books I read in a row. So I special delineated Sarah J. Mass with like the multicolor pink coral deep red. And then um, this was like, R Deep Red is a straight fantasy romance book. And then I have, I'm doing another Sarah J Mass book here. So I have these and then I still, I still have like so many more rows to go. If I sit down and do this for like an hour, I basically get like three rows in an hour because it's a pretty long like blanket. I'm just so excited to have a blanket at the end of the year and then I'm gonna make a border around it and it's just gonna be so cute. I'm so excited. I'm I'm just proud of myself that I've actually stuck with this project this long too. So loving it. Also this, the yarn is very soft. Like it's giving just warm, cozy, cuddled up vibes. I I'm obsessed. So yeah, that's my update. I am going to therapy in a little bit. And then honestly, I don't even know what I'm doing the rest of the day. I have to edit a video. I want to go to the gym, you know, just the huge, just the huge. Okay, I will check in with you guys my next update. Bye. <laughs>Body. Hello, it is Saturday morning. It's been a few days since I checked in. Sorry about that. I haven't read a ton over the last few days, but I have read. Like this morning, I'm like 45% into a part of your world. Gotta be honest with you guys, slowing down a bit for me, okay? I am a little bored. Not gonna lie with you on that one. Also, I just woke up. Sorry, my voice is a little scraggly. I have a big update coming right after the book discussion. Yeah, I'm kind of bored. Daniel, he's giving a little desperado energy, okay? And then also, I just kind of like don't care because they've already gotten together. Like, and that was done in 15% of the book. So there's like no tension, no buildup. And it's kind of just 
little bit boring right now, but I am continuing to pursue on because I do enjoy the author's writing and I'm just kind of interested to see how I'm going to like the book overall. Right now it's giving three stars, I could DNF it, but like it's not bad writing or anything by any means, so I'm kind of continuing to read it and seeing if I'm gonna end up enjoying it, which don't know why I'm doing this to myself, but I don't know, I wanna give it a chance, okay? Big update, well, kind of really reading related, I am sitting right where the new chair is coming. The new chair is coming in literally 20 minutes. I was literally laying in bed this morning, like five minutes ago, and I got a text, hi, this is Crate and Barrel. We're gonna be there in 20 minutes. Thank you for the communication, Crate and Barrel. Okay, good thing I literally just rolled out of bed. But the chair is going right here. I reorganized my bookshelves last night. There's gonna be a book reorganization video coming soon and I'm in love with the way it looks. And I'm just in love with how my book room is finally coming together. I do have like quite a bit of a mess over here that I have to clean up. And I'm still trying to figure out how I wanna, like where I wanna put my desk. Cause the chair is gonna go right here. I was thinking like I might put my desk where I have this like by the window. Cause I really want my filming setup to be like how it normally is with the background being the bookshelves here, you know? I don't know, I think I'm gonna have to play around with it. But like I said, I am filming a reorganization video for it and we'll just see how it kind of plays out. Super pumped though. I literally cannot wait for this chair. I've been waiting for this chair for so long. Like I've been wanting to get a reading chair for like over six months and like finally it's coming. I just hope to God it fits through our hallway because I that was my problem for the longest time is that I was finding chairs that were not gonna fit in through our small doors. This house was built in like 1920 something and like the doors are small, okay? People back then I think were smaller, so I don't know. Um, all right, well, I'm gonna wait for the chair to come and then I'll show you when it's here. <laughs> so excited. Well, hi there everyone. What do you think of my new chair? <laughs> catch me living the rest of my life in this chair, I swear to God. Like this, just like bury me here. I am obsessed with it. It almost didn't make it through the door. It was very precarious. The way that the hallway fits to come into this room, it has like a really narrow turn. Almost didn't make it, but thank you to the delivery men who did it. They worked miracles. Um, I was nervous there for a second. They were working at it for like five minutes until it finally came through the door, but we did it. And since then I have completely redone this room. And like I said before, I am filming a room redecoration vlog for it. So you're gonna like get all the deets like from literally the start to finish. Like I started this vlog before I started painting this room. Like literally we, it's all coming together. It's all coming to fruition right now. We put the chair in here. We also got this tapestry that um, we had gotten for as a, wedding, as a wedding present. And it's like a passage by Ralph Waldo Emerson, which is really beautiful. And then ended up actually moving the desk over here. And there we go, my little reading corner. I'm just sneak peek for the room redecoration vlog, but I am so excited. It looks beautiful. There's just a few little finishing touches um, that I kind of want to put on the room before it all wraps up. Yeah, I haven't really done a whole lot today. Basically, we've sp I've spent most of the day like kind of redoing this room and then, yeah, I need to, ooh! The Amazon man is here. He's delivering either the pillows or the blanket for this room. I have to edit a video and then I do want to keep reading. But yeah, I haven't read anything else since I uh, gave you that little update this morning. But um, I will check in with you guys later. I need to finish editing this video and then hopefully we'll read more of Part of Your World later today. Okay, I'm gonna be sitting here. I am sat all day. I am not moving, okay? Peace out guys, bye. Okay, hi everyone. This is officially my favorite spot in my entire house. I will not be leaving. This is my paradise, okay? And this is where I'm gonna give every single vlog update from here on out. <laughs> okay, so it's Saturday evening. I just got back from dinner with a friend and this afternoon I uploaded my video. I got everything done that I needed to get done, which was great. And then I actually spent some time reading part of your world. So I got 50% into it before I left for dinner. 
guys, I'm sorry to report, um, I'm gonna DNF it. <laughs> and let me explain why, okay? I don't think this is a DNF because of the author, okay? I just wanna say that. I think that this book is just not for me. So there's a few different reasons as to why I decided to DNF it, but the biggest reason is because there's no tension, okay? <laughs> I am reading a contemporary romance that they fell in love with each other within the first 30 pages of the book. It's not keeping me interested at all. There are some external conflicts that are happening, like the housing crisis, like I mentioned, or like there's stuff happening with like, you know, their friends and their family life. But the thing is, is like that stuff doesn't interest me enough to warrant finishing this book. Like I don't care enough about these people to want to read their stories and like the external side characters stories and like how the non-romance plot is going to get sorted out. Like I just don't really care that much. I was in this book for the romance and they fell in love with each other so quickly that I just don't care anymore. Like I literally do not care and <laughs> I feel bad saying this, but I think that I am just having a revelation as a romance reader. I'm like, and, and I am not a romance reader, but what I do like in a romance, if I am going to read a book that is more heavily based on a romantic plot, the characters, there's got to be tension. Okay. There's got to be some type of lead up, some type of, whether it's enemies to lovers, like some type of conflict, which is keeping these people apart from each other, but yet wanting to be involved with each other. Like there's got to be a tension there. Okay. And I don't feel any tension between our characters, like literally none. We haven't even gotten a smut scene. There have been nods to the sex scenes in this book, but like, all of a sudden, like I'm reading contemporary romance plot, all of a sudden they'll throw something really spicy in there, like thinking, I don't know, like having like a daydream about the other person. And I'm like, whoa, like this was a lot. I don't need to be thinking about Daniel in that way. Like Daniel seems like my friend, okay? Not the romantic partner that I am like envisioning. He's no Cassian, that's all I'm saying, okay? I don't care. <laughs> Once the characters fall in love, I'm out. <laughs> like, do I enjoy reading romance? I only enjoy reading the parts where they hate each other, okay? And I think I'm just discovering this about myself as a reader and I just have to accept the fact that I only like romantic plots when they're not together and when the tension builds. Like that's the best part for me. So I'm DNFing it for that reason. This is not a hit on the Minnesota thing at all. I absolutely loved that it is set in Minnesota. And that was one of the reasons why I was thinking about not DNFing it is because I liked that part of it so much. And I loved reading about a book set where I'm from. Like, honestly, that was incredible. But I just like don't care about the characters literally at all. And part of me thought about trying to like stick it out and finish it out till the end. But I was just like, why am I doing this to myself? Like I am currently actively waiting for this to be over and looking at the percentage on my Kindle, waiting for it to go down and go down and go down. This is a sign to DNF a book, you know? So we're just, we're just gonna put this book aside. So right now it's about like eight o'clock in the evening. No, it's nine o'clock in the evening. I have to shower so bad. But after I shower, I'm spending the entire evening reading in this chair, okay? So I got Golden Sun on the back burner and I might like, do I restart A Court of Silver Flames? You know, I'm thinking about it. Um, the other one I was thinking about was When the Moon Hatched. Maybe I'll like read a few chapters from a few different books. Like I, I'm feeling a fantasy romance or a fantasy. Like I just don't, the contemporary thing, I read half of that book and that was enough for me. Okay, I need to get back into my fantasy worlds. <laughs> I honestly might read Golden Sun. And I know I read a little bit of it, like listen to it on audio, but I kind of forgot at this point. So I might just start it over and read as much as I can of it. I just love this series. Okay. Yeah, I think that's gonna be my plan. All right, I'm gonna go shower. I will talk to you guys in a little bit. I can't wait to just sit in my chair. Honestly, do I sleep in the chair tonight? Might. Might fall asleep, wake up at three in the morning and be like, huh, whoops, I'm gonna sleep here tonight. This is just everything I've ever wanted. So I'm very happy right now. I will check in with you guys later. Abby Jimenez, this is not against you, okay? It's me and a one night stand trope transitioning to boyfriend, girlfriend literally right away. Could not. I couldn't do it. It is not you. It's me. Okay, I'll see you in a bit. Bye.
Okay, hi you guys, what's up? So, my cheeks are so red, oh my God. Last few thoughts about part of your world before. I was just thinking in the shower of one thing I forgot to say. I could have finished it and given it a three stars, but the thing is, is like, I am at a point in my life where I don't want to give three stars anymore. If I'm reading a book and I think I'm going to give it a three star, I should just DNF it. Like, honestly, I don't care at that point. It's not worth my time at that point. Like, I just, I'm not in the place of my life where I don't give out four or five stars. Like, if it, and literally, if it's anything less than a three and a half star, I'm like, why am I even reading this? It just feels like a waste of my time. And that's how I felt, okay? Like I said, I did really enjoy the Minnesota aspect of it. I loved the medical representation and like the discussion around that and the fact that she was a doctor that was really great. And I feel like I would be totally interested in reading yours truly because I think it centers around a medical setting. But like the, the romantic trope was just not it for me. Like I need tension, I need buildup. And I think it's just something that I've realized about myself. So those are my final thoughts on part of your world. Um, yeah, unfortunately it wasn't for me, but I genuinely don't think it's a bad book. I just like, am not the reader for it, you know? What I wanted to talk about next, the books I have on hand, okay? First of all, Golden Sun, this is an option. Second of all, Forgot I have my library books. A Curious Beginning by Deanna Rayborn. Um, this is a mystery, which I haven't read a mystery in years. And I kind of want to give it a try. It's supposed to snow like feet tomorrow, like multiple inches of snow. And I feel like it would be kind of cozy and cute to like snuggle up in my chair, watch the snowfall and read a cozy mystery. Like that just sounds incredible. The other one I have is The Ever King, which I would be interested because in it's fantasy romance. I think I'm gonna go with The Curious Beginning because this is also a blue book. Remember, we were trying to read blue books this week. So I think I'm gonna read A Curious Beginning and see what I think. I'm honestly so excited about this. Like I haven't read a mystery in God knows how long and I'm kind of thinking I might enjoy it. Let's cozy up, let's read a cute little mystery and see what I think. I'm so excited, you guys. This is like my dream. Like, I'm not even kidding you. This is heaven. Like, did I die and go to heaven? This is what I want my heaven to look like, okay? <laughs> All right, guys, let's do it. Okay, hi guys, little vlog check-in. It's Sunday today, oh my God. Genuinely, I've had the best Sunday ever. I'm like not even kidding you. This, if this could describe my perfect weekend day, it would. Slept in until like eight o'clock. Yes, that is sleeping in for me. Then I woke up, I drank my coffee for about an hour, hour and a half. Then we went to the gym, did an hour and a half workout, felt great, did legs, did some stair stepper. I'm in my Nesta era, it was awesome. And then now I have come back and I am just sitting in my chair all day. It is snowing outside. I am like cozied up. I got some new pillows and then I got this like really cozy blanket from Amazon. And I am just like genuinely living my best life right now. No idea what time it is. It's, this is just like peak coziness peak peace for myself like this is how i want to spend a day when it is just snowing outside i can't go outside i can't do anything else like this is like 
this is my perfect day, genuinely. So I am, I don't know, like 30 pages in. I really haven't like read a ton ton. I've had to like go back and keep rereading pages because the, the, the vocabulary in here is quite intense. Like it's, I'm talking about Curious Beginning, by the way. It, it's very English, it's very British, right? And so they use a lot of different kind of vernacular and, and speech language that I am not used to reading. Not in a bad way. It's not as intense as you would read like with Pride and Prejudice where it's like you really have to concentrate because the the sentence structure and like vocabulary is so different than typical like American English, you know? I am reading this and I have a British accent going in my brain. And I feel like I'm sure the audiobooks are the same where it's a it's a British accent. It just, it's giving a Sherlock Holmes vibe. I don't know what it is. Okay, wait, no. I think I do know what it is. I love the Brit Broski podcast, The Broski Report, obsessed with it. She has been talking a lot about Sherlock Holmes over these last few podcast episodes, and I've never watched Sherlock Holmes. I've never really been into like Sherlock Holmes lore or like the mysteries, any kind of anything like that. But then when this, the newest release of this book series came out, everyone has been like posting it on their stories, talking about it on Instagram and Goodreads and whatever. And I'm like, maybe I should just give it a try. And I thought today is gonna be the perfect day. It is snowing outside, like what better day to read it? cozy mystery than today. I like just decided to check it out at the library because I'm like, I might as well give this series a try. Wow. I'm already loving it. I'm already like so excited to have a ton of cozy mysteries to read. I just looked up how many books are the series. There's like nine of them. I feel like this is not a book series. Well, I honestly don't know. I, this is just the vibes that I'm getting where I don't feel like I'm going to have to read them back to back to back because it feels like each one is going to be in itself a mystery rather than like a fantasy series where they continue to play off one another. And maybe I'm totally wrong about that. This is just like the vibes that I'm getting right now. I'm just really enjoying it and I'm really loving it. And I just feel like this could be a new genre for me that I actually really, really like. It feels um, satisfying to me coming off of not enjoying Part of Your World and just like fully accepting that like contemporary romance <laughs> isn't for me. And maybe, maybe I just haven't read the right ones, but this is giving me the vibes that I want right now and I'm really happy with it. And I feel like maybe later tonight, if I want a break from reading, maybe I'll watch Sherlock Holmes. I've never watched it before with Robert Downing Jr. because that's the one that Brittany Broski just like preaches about and absolutely loves. So um, yeah, that's where I'm at. And I'm, I'm just really loving it. I'm watching Realmathon reading sprints with Cassidy and Mal and Lexi right now and just living my best life. I don't know what time it is. I don't want to know what time it is. It is snowing outside. It, I'm looking at my bookshelves like I am at peace like this oh just the way that me redoing this room has given me like calm like I feel at home it I like can't even explain to you how happy I am right now like genuinely <laughs> like I am in my element <laughs> all right I'm gonna keep reading um I'll check up with you guys when I've made more progress on the book okay bye It is still Sunday. Um, you guys, I am living my most cozy dreams. Like, like I am truly living. This is living. I've been reading for the last like three hours and then I fell asleep. I literally fell asleep with my book in my hand. I did one of these. <laughs> I just completely passed out. I am about on page 100 right now of a curious beginning and I am in love, okay? I am so 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 loving this this is exactly what i'm in the mood for right now so let me explain if you don't know what veronica speedwell is because i didn't know what it is until i picked up this book it's just it's giving sherlock holmes but a woman which what more could you ask for 
okay? It's set in London in 1887. We're following our main character, Veronica Speedwell, who was an orphan child who was adopted by these two women. The whole book sets off with one of those two women that she was like her adopted aunts is what she called them. One of them died and she goes, she's at the funeral and then she's coming home from the funeral and basically gets like mugged or like attacked. And someone comes out of the woodworks, whisks her away and he's like, I knew your mother and you need to trust me, but the po someone's trying to kill you and we need to get away from here. So they go off to London and then now they're in London and like, I don't know, the mystery is starting to unfold. I don't even feel like we've gotten even that far into the mysteriousness of this. <laughs> I'm just in love with the setting. I'm in love with the characters. Like I said previously, the dialogue and the vocabulary is a little bit out of my comfort zone, but I don't not like it. I just am having to reread things a few times to understand what they're trying to say to each other. <laughs> like, it's just very wordy. Like I was mentioning with like Pride and Prejudice or like, you know, proper English in the like late 1800s. It's just wordy and I feel like they take a long time and use big words to say little things. <laughs> I hope that doesn't offend anyone, but um, sometimes I have trouble with it. It doesn't feel like I'm reading a classic book, you know? Um, it's just like late 1800s Victorian English language kind of vibe. You know what I mean? I'm very excited to get to the more like the mystery part and like the problem solving part of it. But Veronica, from what we know of her, she is just quick-witted. She can pick up on things in an instant. She can understand body language very well. She just is very on the nose and not not like intuitive, but she just she just can pick up on things like really, really easily and can understand people's intentions without them saying it. Like she can pick up on body language really well or habits really well, or like she just, she just like knows someone just by like looking at you. I, there's a word for it that is not coming to my brain and it's bugging me, but she's just like very insightful. Like I've said before, I'm like, I've never really been into Sherlock Holmes, but I feel like maybe this could get me into it and get me into kind of cozy mystery kind of vibes. And it's still snowing outside. It's literally been snowing all day. It's a winter wonderland out there. And I am just snuggled up with my cozy book and I never am leaving this room. I swear to God, this is just, I'm, I'm living my best life. So this weekend was the weekend of peace talks for Realmathon. And unfortunately I am just trying my best to get out, out of a reading slump. Like I am really trying to finish a book to be honest with you. And while I didn't finish a book this weekend, I'm just glad that I've gotten such a good head start on this. And um, I feel like I'm gonna probably finish this hopefully within the week. This is gonna be the the book that I'm trying to finish in this vlog before I stop the vlog. So yes, again, while this vlog is now, it's been a week, I just wanna finish a book in this vlog. So I'm gonna continue the vlog until I finish the book. But yeah, I'm really enjoying this and I just wanted to give it another check-in and I've been just kind of like watching reading sprints and hanging out, taking a nap, just living my best cozy life and so happy about this room. Like I, my heart is just full. Like this is all I've ever wanted for my space. I can't wait to for you to see the redecoration vlog. Like it's almost done. There's just like one more part that I have to do of redecorating the room and then I can upload it. It's been going on for six months. I'm not even kidding you. I think I started this vlog back in like August or something. I'm gonna go, I need to eat some food and then I will, um, maybe I'll check in later tonight, maybe tomorrow, who knows. See you in the next clip. Bye. guys how's it going today is wednesday march 20 something 27th i think i don't know regardless i have a new hyperfixation and unfortunately i can't tell you about it and what i will say it's related to my youtube channel and i think you're gonna be really pumped about what it is when i can talk about it but i'm sorry to be so coy the way i want to talk about this so bad right now this is killing me because normally I am such an open book. Like, like I 
have no secrets. I am always just talking about whatever is going on in my life. The way that this is, it's burning inside me to tell you what's happening. I can't, but <laughs> just know you're going to be obsessed with it. Okay. Just know you're going to love it. Just know this is going to be so much fun but I'm under lock and key. Okay, let's talk about my reading. A Curious Beginning, rocking it, loving it, living, laughing, loving, okay? It's so cute. Like, I'm not like obsessed with it, but it's just like a cute time. It's a cute, cozy little time. At the part where I'm at right now, we are currently following Veronica as she has kind of teamed up with this guy named Mr. Stoker. And initially when Mr. Stoker was described, I pictured like an Albert Einstein type of character, like this like mad scientist who is like frizzled hair. He's like older and like, like, like old. Okay. Um, but turns out we're getting a little bit of love in interest going on. So maybe I pictured him wrong. <laughs> maybe he's young and he kind of just had a little bit of a glow up moment where we tamed that. And it sounds like she's a little bit interested in him right now. <laughs> so I'm having to reframe that narrative in my head. It's challenging for me to do, but we're getting there. Um, it's really cute though. We kind of have entered a circus almost. So Veronica and Mr. Stoker are trying to kind of like be undercover right now and trying to figure out how did this person die? And um, they're trying to like look for clues in certain areas. And right now they had tried to like initially escape where they first were. So Mr. Stoker has like these group of friends who are in the circus. So he's kind of like brought her to the circus with them. And they're tagging along with this team of circus performers for a while. I like the constant change of setting. I think that's really interesting. I just feel like we haven't, I'm about on like page like 130 right now. We haven't gotten too far into the mystery plot and I'm waiting for it to pick up. Right now, it's just kind of like a cute, fun time, which is great, but like let's get to it. You know, like, let me get to the part where I can't put the book down. Let me get to the part where the mystery I am like using my brain cells to think like, I need this to be a game for my brain, you know, like a puzzle game in which I'm going to improve my brain cells. <laughs> That's what I always think of when I think of a mystery. I'm like, I'm going to solve this mystery. Um, but right now there's nothing to solve. I mean, there is, but like, I have no clues. I have nothing to put together, not doing any type of puzzle here yet, but I'm enjoying it. I'm just waiting for it to like pick up a little bit. So not feeling a five star, but like I'm having a good time. You know, it's not like I felt with part of your world where I'm like, it's a three star. I want to put it down. Like, I feel like this could be like a three and a half, four star. It has potential right now. I'm not bored with it yet though. So that's good. I'm definitely going to still continue on. I really, really like the writing style too. I've never really watched any Sherlock Holmes movies or anything. Wait, lie. I just lied to you. We literally watched the first Sherlock Holmes on Sunday night and I loved it. It was so cute. It was so campy. Oh my God. Like it was funny and campy and like, I, I really, really enjoyed it. Robert Downing Jr. Love. He was actually like a very funny um, character too. And the, like the way he played Sherlock Holmes was like way more comical than I expected it to be. But now I kind of want to watch like more like Sherlock Holmes style TV shows and stuff. There's one with Benedict Cumberbatch that was apparently very good that I haven't seen. So maybe I'll do that. I digress. Yeah, it's giving like cute Sherlock Holmes vibes and... I'm really, really enjoying the writing style. I feel like this would be a really great audiobook. Like I bet whoever does the audiobook has just this like prim and proper British accent and it's just probably a joy to listen to. Like I feel like if I get more into the series, I definitely want to at least try one on audio um, because I have a feeling the audiobooks are really good. But yeah, that is what's going on. That is my life. I really wish I could talk to you about my current hyperfixation because it's your you're going to be obsessed. You're going to be obsessed with it. I'm not even kidding you in the way that you're going to be obsessed because I'm obsessed with it. Okay. And when I tell you I am more obsessed with this than anything that I have had on my booktube channel ever, ever in my lifetime, that's where we're at. Okay. So I really hope you're going to love this. <laughs> Speculate on what you think it's going to be. Okay. Um, or don't like, I, I don't care, but that's a little check-in. My goal is to finish a curious beginning within the next few days. We'll see. Okay. But regardless, 
hope you're enjoying the vlog. I know this is kind of a long one. It's again, a two week vlog, but like, I just want to be able to finish a book before I upload it. You know what I mean? Okay. I'll see you guys later. Bye. Hi, it's Friday, March 29th, aka the weekend. Not an update on this. I think the last time I updated you is the exact same place I am in. I have like literally not read a singular page of this since I last updated you, but I did start a new book. <laughs> Not me reading like five books at one time. Well, I had to start this book because my book club for it is next Tuesday, which is like five days away or something, four days away, and I need to read it now. So my book club pick this month was Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. This is my in-person book club with my friends and family. If you didn't know, I don't, I do not have an online book club. One day would like to, but not there yet. My book club picked this book. I didn't really have any kind of feelings towards it. I know this was like Barnes and Noble's best book of the year last year. Someone suggested it and we're like, yeah, sure. And it's like a historical, I don't know. Would you call this historical fiction? I feel yes. It's set in 1950. I'm just gonna talk about this real quick because I am about an hour into the audiobook. I only have the audiobook. I don't have a physical copy. Liking the audiobook so far, good narrator. So it's set in 1950 and you're following our main character, Elizabeth Zott. It's either Zot or Zod, I'm not sure. And she is a chemist. She has this kind of like encounter with one of her kids' parents at her school, who's like a TV producer or something. And she ends up getting a cooking show with this TV producer. So that's like how the book starts off. And then immediately we get thrown back into how she got to be a chemist and a scientist and whatnot. And we're kind of going through her studies when she was in grad school and all that kind of stuff. Um, already we got big themes of discussing the oppression of women during 1950s. And while in grad school, she faces quite a bit of difficulty in advancing her career because it's a very sexist industry. Like men mainly predominate that industry during the 1960s or the 1950s. And still there's a lot of big predominance in academic science in general, like it's still a very big male dominated field, but we're, we're improving it, but it's it still is that way, FYI. So she's talking about how she wanted to be a chemist and the hardship that she faces in trying to advance her career in a very sexist industry, which is really sad as someone who studied science in school and had many of my friends go on to grad school and stuff and have heard stories about how it is still kind of that way at some places. The conversation is very heavily on women's suffrage, but not as like suffrage of like a, a country. It's just more like the individual hardships that she has faced throughout her life. Elizabeth is a very, strong-willed woman. She does not take anyone's bullshit, okay? She does not stoop to men's presumptions of her and like she very much asserts herself in a very good way um, and ve she very much advocates for herself as well. And it's very empowering to kind of like listen to the story so far. Um, I am really enjoying it. You guys, I haven't read a literary fiction or f general fiction, historical fiction style of book in almost a year at this point. And um, this is kind of a nice little refresher. Like it rem it's reminding me how much I do love a good literary fiction when one comes along. I am enjoying it. And I have a feeling I'm going to continue enjoying it. And I feel like this book is gonna really drive home a message about um, women's rights and you know, how far we still have to go in terms of gaining equality in the US of between men and women in both career and home life in general. I heard a crazy statistic the other day, kind of on the same subject. I'm like listening to stuff about parenting and stuff because I'm I'm curious if I ever want to become a parent. I was listening to this like podcast about parenting and compared to today, women in 1960 spend 21% more time with their children now and men spend like 150% more time with their children today as they did in 1960, which is wild. Like absent parents back then, you know, like where were the men in 
parental roles in their family. Crazy statistic. The, the point I'm trying to make is that she is trying to prove that women do not have to stay home and just have one role in society as bearing children and being homemakers and stuff. And I don't know, I just love when a good message hits, you know? Like, I just feel like this book is gonna, it's gonna make me feel a passion burning inside. And it already is making me feel passion burning inside because the way that Elizabeth acts in her daily life and the way that she is so strong-willed and believes in herself so much, um, is so empowering. As women and growing up as a girl, you know how you're always just supposed to say yes and like stay in your place and like everything you do or say is wrong and like the man is always right and like you know you know what I'm saying. Like that's just like a societal thing that like and I'm just I grew up in the US, right? But like growing up as a woman and a girl, you feel like you're never right and you always have to like just put your head down and like say that men are always right or whatever or, like authority is always right it's just okay i'm going off on a tangent but you know what i mean but it's really refreshing to see her stand up to that and not just put her head down and say yes everything's fine and yes i will do what you say and i have no opinion and i am a no one and don't even look at me you know <laughs> she's not doing that it's really great to see so yeah, I'm about an hour into that book, really, really enjoying it, hoping to finish A Curious Beginning tonight. I am probably halfway through and I would really like to finish this because I am so in the mood to start a fantasy romance right now. And I'm going to start a fantasy romance reading vlog in the coming week. So I like literally cannot wait to get to that. Um, but right now I am enjoying my books and I'm going to end this vlog when I finish these books. So that's the tea. Other things I want to say, Beyonce's album came out today, Cowboy Carter. Speechless. Jaw dropped. Shook. Oh my god, it's so good. If you haven't listened to it yet, you should go listen to it. It's incredible. And lastly, I got a package. We ordered a book. I say we because Reed wanted this book. So, but also I wanted it too. So we got it. How do I open this? Oh, here we go. Okay. Great. <laughs> Amazon's trying to be cool with their new packaging, but this is not working. All right, here we go. We got this. The Will of the Many by James Islington. Reed really wants to read this book and I also want to read this book. I don't know what this is about. Amazon kind of messed this one up. This book is not folded properly so that's kind of annoying on the dust jacket. Yeah, Reed wanted to read it and I also want to read it. I'm probably not going to read it anytime soon but he's going to read it right now. It's a book one. It is a series. Fast paced, intricate, expansive. And there's like mysteries. I don't know. This sounds good. When he explained it to me a few days ago, it sounded good to me. So yeah, mini little book haul for you. All right, I am gonna start uh, reading A Curious Beginning and then I'm gonna continue listening to lessons in chemistry throughout the weekend. And what is going on this weekend? I'm probably gonna work out. We got some social activities going on. It's Easter, so we're gonna go see our family and stuff. And then, yeah, that's about it. I will talk to you guys in the next update. Bye. Well. I just finished A Curious Beginning. I checked in with you guys on Friday and I think my last update for you on this book was like around page like 130 or something. I don't know. I've read literally the whole thing since then, okay? Today, I think I read like 140 pages of it today and I thought it was so cute. I feel like the things that I had talked about at the beginning of this book where I was like, okay, I wanna get to the mystery part. Oh baby, we got to the mystery part. It took a little bit, but we got there and it was worth the wait. I feel like everything that was kind of taking a little bit, a little while to get into it in the first part of the book was necessary for the second part of the book for sure. So I, I guess the pacing felt a little slower at first, but once you got into it, it was like, Things were happening back to back to back to back to back. And the twist at the end, totally did not expect that. I like that, I, I literally was like reading here. I read the twist and I was like, ah, excuse me? Like, did not see that one coming, which I loved. I, I felt like this was very unpredictable for me. Like I did not know what was going on. When we were twisting and turning, it was things that I was not expecting. Like I did not foresee anything in the book. And I don't know if that goes to my lack of putting things together very well or 
this is just great. I think it, this is just great. Like, I feel like it just wasn't predictable at all in the best way. I loved the dialogue and I, I love the writing style of it. I feel like that was the biggest strength of this book was how it was written. And I know I was talking about how in the beginning it took a little bit of getting used to because I'm just not used to reading in this kind of like proper English, you know, Victorian English writing style at all where they're like just very kind of like wordy and lengthy with their sentences and like it's just it, it this book is British like but also it was funny it was witty there was a lot of banter like it was it was done so well I think this would be an incredible audiobook and I wish that I had an audio narrative to go along with it because I just think that the audiobooks will be incredible for these. Um, I just requested the audiobook for the second book in the series from my library and that's going to come in in two weeks. So I'm really excited to give the next one in the series a try with audio. I am continuing on the series. I am giving this a four star though. This was the first cozy mystery I've pretty much ever read. I've read mysteries before but this one was definitely like cozy mystery Sherlock Holmes kind of vibes and I really enjoyed it. Towards the end I honestly think I was reading this book for too long. I feel like if I would have binge the whole thing in a weekend maybe I would have given it a 4.25 or 4.5 I don't think I would have given this a five but I really do feel like kind of that like 150 page point where I was just like when are we gonna pick this up like it just felt like a little slow at first but like I said all of that seemed necessary for the ending so yeah I think I'm, I'm giving it a four I very much enjoyed it I want to continue on with the series and like I said in the beginning when I had first picked this book up I don't think this is a book series where you have to read like back to back to back like it's not like Red Rising or Golden Sun or whatever like like you can take breaks between these books and in a good way. But I really liked Veronica's character a lot. I thought she was, yeah, again, like very just intuitive and smart and witty and like funny. It was it was great. And I loved her relationship with um, Stoker the whole time too. Um, and I did end up reframing his image in my brain to be more of like a younger gentleman and not like an Albert Einstein type of look that was necessary because I think Stoker is uh, going to be a main character going forward in the rest of these books. So their relationship, it it was so cute. I, I loved the way they played off of each other, the banter that they had. And also there was this kind of like, undertone of like a romantic tension going on which was not um overly delved into but it was there and I appreciated it a lot. There were a few little parts in the book where I was like oh we're getting a little feisty with it like I just like loved it. Their banter was adorable. It, it was like a loose enemies to lovers like they didn't like love each other at first. That is like not even a focus of this book at all, but like there's a little bit of tension there. Like, I don't know how it's gonna play out in the books to come, but like there's a little bit of something, you know? <laughs> I feel like this is unlike anything I've ever read before. And I, again, I'm not like a mystery reader. Like I'm not a cozy mystery girl at all. So like, I don't know how this compares to other cozy mysteries, but I very much enjoyed this. I have heard that this is one of the better like cozy mystery series out there. So I'm glad I gave it a try. And I definitely want to continue on with with the series. I think it was so cute and so great. So yeah, that is my thoughts on A Curious Beginning. Would recommend this. If you want to read a cozy mystery, like I think people who like cozy mysteries or mysteries in general, could have the potential of giving this five stars. I just don't know if Cozy Mysteries is my genre and I don't know when I would give a mystery five stars, but I really enjoyed it. And I feel like I would totally recommend this to anyone who wants to read a mystery. And they had conversation about gender equality in it, which was incredible considering this was set in like 1880 or like 1890 or something like that, when women were extremely, oppressed in society and like the fact that we were getting like representation for gender equality and and not dimming women down to be just homemakers and baby makers and all that kind of stuff I was just like yes other big update I have to give an update on this because I listened to this book today it, today's Easter Reed and I went and visited our parents and we have like quite a drive to go see them so we listened to Golden Sun in the car Oh my god. 
oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. This is gonna be a five star, I swear to god, okay? This is gonna be a five star. I'm on chapter nine. That was like, we're like three and a half hours into the audiobook. Speechless. Like, you thought Red Rising was good? I'm literally like a hundred pages in and it's already so gripping. It's already just so unpredictable. It's like twisting and turning like no one is safe literally anything could happen and I love it I love it I am on the edge of my seat with this book we came back this evening and I had like I don't know 75 pages left to read of A Curious Beginning and I wanted to read this so 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 bad but I was like I just I have to finish the other book like I have to get it back to the library today's the last day of March I want to like complete another book in March and I'm glad I did, but like, I was thinking about her the whole time. I was thinking about Golden Sun. I cannot wait to continue on reading this. I feel like I can't even like tell you what's going on in the story because it's just like, I don't want to spoil anything for people who haven't read Red Rising yet too. The way Reed was trying to describe this to my sister, because my sister really loves to read, um, and my sister has been recommended reading Red Rising and stuff like that too, but Reed was trying to, to tell her what it's about, and he's like, just try to read Red Rising. If you like Red Rising, great, you're gonna love the rest of the series. If you don't like Red Rising, you're probably still gonna like the rest of the series because the first book is nothing like the rest of the books. So right. This book is worlds different from the first book in the best way possible. Like the first book is just this major setup to this prolific, like epic sci-fi. I just feel like it's going to be so good. Like there's no element of predictability to this series. And I love it so much. I have a feeling I'm just going to continue ranting and raving about this book as I continue to read it. But like, this is all I want to read. And it's unfortunate because I have I have a book club on Tuesday, which is two days away from today. And I've literally read an hour of that other book and all I wanted to do was read this book. And that other book is Lessons in Chemistry, which I haven't read any further in that book yet, but that's all I'm gonna be doing tomorrow. I'm literally waking up early so I can start listening to the book because like, don't know if I'm gonna finish it for the book club in time. <laughs> So yeah, that is all the reading updates I have to give, but I am going to end this vlog here because I've been going for like two weeks on this vlog and it's just time for a turnover for the start of a new vlog. You know what I mean? Total in this vlog, DNF'd part of your world. Glad I did that. Looking back on it, happy I made that decision. Um, haven't even thought about part of your world since then. Everything I read has kind of gone out of my mind. I am glad I did that. Gave this a four star, made some progress on Golden Sun, loving it. This is gonna be five stars for sure. Like I already, it's already giving me those feels. I'm just living for the drama of this book. Started Lessons in Chemistry. I will be finishing that over the next few days, but then little teaser for what's coming. I'm gonna start a fantasy romance reading vlog this week. So get ready for that. KU fantasy romance reading. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you've made it this far into the video, leave like, it's, there's like a little magnifying glass to like symbolize a curious beginning. Like leave a little spy magnifying glass because we were going on a journey. We were solving mysteries. We were doing little Sherlock Holmes. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for coming along with me and spending a few weeks with me. I'll see you my next video. Love you so much. Have a good day. I need to go to bed. It's like 1030 and I have to wake up super early to read lessons in chemistry. Okay? Love you. Bye.